Everybody, thanks. And again, thanks to Topaz for now. I think this is the 22nd webinar that we've done together. Thanks for all those coming back. Hello and welcome back. And for anybody new, thanks for checking in. I appreciate it. So Heath had asked me, and, and I had offered very vigorously, because I'm a huge fan of this particular piece of software, and when they released version 2, I was hopeful to be able to do another demonstration. We had great success just at the first time, and so much so that people begged for a second follow-up, which we did, and here we are now able to talk about the new features. So um, let's do this. Let's go down to Photoshop. And let's just go ahead and open, <clears throat> excuse me, and you'll notice for those who have been with me before, look, look what I did. I actually put a layer in already. I'm always forgetting to add a layer so I can turn things on and off and show you, so I thought I'd be ahead of the curve today. Uh, okay, so let's go to Texture Effects 2 and at least open the interface so that we can start to have a dialogue about it and make sure things are sized right. Yeah, everything looks good. Okay. Before we really dive deep, and, and we're not going to do as many images today just because we have so much to cover on the new features and capabilities from within. So some of the things that I won't demonstrate but that you should be aware about of rather are things like 25 new effects that they've created as pre-canned effects, if you will. And if we look at the screen, I'm talking about going back to here and these effects that show up in different categories, whether earthy uh, or, again, if you recall, we can go to these three dots and we can look things in different ways. So we can go by tags, meaning that we can look for, in this case, nature or, or we can look for landscape, right? So there's 25 new effects that you can pick from to either use or get started from to modify into what you want. Uh, 25 new effects. There's 50 new texture assets that they've allowed you to have from one set from my good friend uh, Hazel Meredith, who is wonderful at using this product as well, and you should see her webinars. But she's uh, she has some uh, wonderful textures that she's created as well as little owls. Um, things like, you know, there's new double exposure images, and I'm going to remind you when we get to that portion that we can add our own images to do double exposures with. Uh, uh, there's faster processing, which is always useful to make things move along quickly. Um, you can rotate your textures now freely rather than just flip in either horizontally and vertical. Uh, and then it's really nice because in this upgrade, your, all of your assets and your presets and all those good things tend to, they will rather migrate from texture one, uh, the original texture effects, if you will, to two. So that's some overview of some of the things that are being uh, added. The other ones, and there are many that we're going to talk about today, uh, we'll cover as, as we move along here. So let me just make, scroll my notes down so we make sure to cover the things that I really want to get to here. Okay, so from an interface standpoint, we do have some changes. We've got a sort order. If we go to the very top right, we do have a sort order. Uh, so we can go A to Z and flip them. Makes it a little easier to find some things. We now have different ways to view. And here, let me click an effect because it will be a whole lot easier to see this. There we go. So not only do we have this full screen look, but we have a split screen look. We can do that vertically or horizontally. We can have images side by side or, again, images on top of each other. It really is kind of handy for seeing where you started and where you're ending, so we have some nice new views. The big deal is down here we have an undo, and we'll show you that. We have unlimited undos all the way back to the beginning and redo. So obviously, though, if you make a change, so if, you've un if you use the undo back five steps, and then you do something else as a, you're not going to be able to, to redo back to those five steps again. You'll be able to redo just to that furthest place you've been. But this is a very, very welcome addition because I don't know about you, but as you're using version one, oftentimes you start to make some changes and you go, yeah, I liked it four steps ago. Gosh, I wish I could go back. You'd have to throw that layer away and start over again. So now we can undo and I'm using that all the time. So that that's huge. Um, Let's see. So let's 
let's that's really the the basic things uh, on this screen here. We now have blend, blend mode here and opacity right on the screen. So just as a refresher for anybody who's new, if we find a look that we like, and let's say you know what, let's make this a little more educational. So let's say that I have a, a texture in. For instance, I remember at some point there was a savanna texture that I liked, and you can't remember what category it's in, or in this case, uh, you know, was it in still? I just don't remember. Well, what you do is you go up here to these three dots and go to search. Now that gives me a search dialog from all of these looks, and we can start to do savanna. Of course, I. Uh, I think it was moon. Maybe it was moon. Maybe it was moon. So they had a moon or something like that. Uh, you know what? Maybe it was noon. And this is kind of how it happened. Oh, there we go. Savannah noon. That's what it was. And that'll get me back to that. So just just by way of quick review, you can look through collections, and those collections are named thusly. You know, gray grunge, ethereal, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can look through tags which is another way to categorize things by things like sports, sexual portrait, on and on. Or if you were working in the past and you want to find, or even if you just want to play around and just search for anything that has the word blue in it or daisy or whatever, it's a fun way to search. But in this case, I like this Savannah Noon. And again, by way of refresh here, and then we'll start to add the new features here in a second, Anytime you find one that you like and then you want to start modifying that, just click the sliders and now we can see all the panels. So, so far everything's the same, right? Everything's pretty much the same as we go along. And again, just by way of review, I will always come in and I turn these eyeballs all off to see what the folks back at Topaz did to create this look, and then I go through and I say, okay, so they did a basic adjustment. I see, so I kind of warmed it up. If I want to see exactly what they did, I just roll this adjustment open by hitting the triangle, and I can see what they did to these sliders. Uh, and then I can say, okay, they added a texture. I like what that did. They added a color overlay. You know, I, yeah, I don't need that color overlay. I, I don't really like it. I can go to the trash can and throw it away. Split tone. Yeah, that's not bad. I don't mind the split tone. I like what that does. Film grain, I can take it or leave it. I'm going to leave it, so I mean throw it away rather. And then it looks like they came in and did another basic adjustment and masked it on the bottom somewhat. So I really like a lot of what they did. But now let's start to investigate what's going on that's new uh, here. And let's do that with this texture layer. The first thing we're going to notice is very, everything's very similar here. They've moved for the moment, I'm hoping they're going to change this, they've moved the opacity and the blend modes down to the bottom. And they've enabled masking and made the masking much more robust, which we will see here in a little bit. You now have spot color, luminosity, and brush type masking. So there's a whole lot going on there masking. But the first thing you should notice here is a dramatic difference in this area. So let me pull in for a minute. Here's version one. And here we are with the same texture layer open. Let me pull them so you can actually see them. And you'll notice that there's brightness, contrast, detail, you know, it had detail before, but you didn't have brightness and contrast, and you still have the saturation, color strength, and so forth, but that adding brightness and contrast is a really big deal, because again, remember something that's important here, if I have this layer open, and I know that's the layer I'm working on is texture here, and I roll texture open, these sliders are working on that texture. They're not working on the background, they're working on the texture. So what do we have here? We now have the ability to size our texture and make it bigger or smaller. Okay, right? We can rotate it freely now, and you can see that rotating there. For those who have a need, that's a nice feature to have. You can flip it left or right, you can flip it up and down. You're not able to see that texture real well. Let me, let me just change the blending mode for a minute. It might make life a little easier. There we go. It doesn't look good, but at least you can see what's going on here. So make it bigger or smaller. Rotate on um, so forth. You can do that. Uh, flipping it because you might have a dark or a light part of a texture that you want to do, and that way you can do that. 
And then notice now they have this thing called edge expansion. This is also new. And so I can mirror, I can tile, or I can extend. So you know, if you have a black border here, you can resize and extend the black edge if you'd like to. You can, the, you know, creativity is what's going to apply here as to extend the canvas. Or if you had a, a texture that was too small, and somebody was just asking me about that on a workshop, you know, you'll be able to resize it this way, but you can also extend the edge for whatever reason you might want to do that. But look at this. I love having the ability to adjust the brightness and the contrast right here within this texture. We didn't have that before, and I was very happy to see that ad because that was something I was really wanting to do. Okay, I think that was, what was that overlay before? I don't remember what it was. Or was it normal? I think it was actually soft light now that I think about it. So again, you can change the opacity of what's happening. Let me bring this down a little bit. That's where it was. That's what I'm missing. So I can change the opacity of the texture layer itself and change the blend modes of that. Okay, so let's go back here. Let me just check out. And then let the, I'll go back to here and show you. So I can undo, 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 undo. I, I'm going way back here just to show you how far back I can go in undos, which is pretty tremendous. So we're just going to keep going back until I made that change. So, so if I didn't remember what my blend mode it was, I no longer need to worry about that because, look, I'm back to the soft light blend mode and the opacity that was originally there. So big changes on each layer now also has opacity and blend modes for whatever layer. When I say layer, I mean, and let me roll this up so you can follow me and make, so it'll make sense to you. When I say a layer, maybe I should call it adjustment, but I, I consider this an adjustment layer. These are all individual adjustment layers. And what I mean by that is if I wanted to add dust and scratches in there, notice that I have opacity and a blend mode available to me so I can do whatever I want. And, and what's beautiful about this particular piece of software is I can just hover over these and go through what each blend mode is going to do and get an idea of how that's going to work. And again, here's your different dust and scratches and so forth. So you have a lot more control on each individual one, but let's go back for a second. Uh, I want to roll this up. Oops, sorry. Come on, you can get up there. There we go. And I'm going to throw that away because I don't want that. But let's start showing you what you can do here. Let, let's say that you liked this adjustment as far as the basic adjustment. And this can be done for any adjustment you do. They've added this area here on the layer. So what you can do now is I can copy that basic adjustment. I can now roll this up, and I can go down to the texture area if I wanted to, and I can paste this, or I can paste it as an enhancement. So before I do that, the paste enhancement, you might be saying, what on earth is an enhancement? Well, now not only do you have the ability to make adjustments here that we're speaking about and the added power that they've added with a few new sliders, but notice at the bottom here it says enhance. If I open up the split tone, notice it says enhance. If I open up the basic adjustment, it says enhance. So let's go back to texture. And what enhance means is if I click on it, I now have the ability to go and get any one of those adjustments and add an enhancement to that adjustment. So I can go get the basic panel, for instance, and think of this as adding a sub-layer to these, uh, this layer. So this is now going to, we're on, the, sorry, I'm trying to get up to here. So I'm on the texture layer at this point. And what I've done is I've added, and you can see it's indented slightly here, I've added a brightness, or I'm sorry, a basic adjustment, and now I can do further adjustments, but, but guess what that's adjusting right now? Not the overall photo, it's adjusting just the texture. So it's very subtle, 
um, adjustments going on right here because it's only adjusting whatever texture I've chosen. And again, I can change the temperature now of that texture and make it warmer or cooler. Again, very slight things happening here because it's going to depend on the tonalities of the texture that you have chosen. But that's adding a ton more capability to each layer. And, what, and the, the important thing to hear there again is if I go and I roll this up and I add a basic adjustment from this level here, that basic adjustment is going to have a major adjustment because it's affecting the entire stack and everything above it. Whereas, let's throw that one away, whereas what we did here is we said, nope, I just want to affect the texture itself with a few more adjustments and change the color or what have you. So that's what enhancements do. So let's see what we can do. To, to, now let's go back to this idea that, uh, and we'll do it on the split tone. It's probably not going to work real well, but I want to go back to this, uh, what we copy. So you remember, we started this discussion off by saying, I like this adjustment that I did so I can copy it. And that allows us to now go to any other layer and hit paste or paste that adjustment as an enhancement. Again, it didn't make a big adjustment. I saw the foreground get bright again, which it should have, but it just gives you one more control capability from within all of the tools that you have here to cut and uh, copy rather and paste an adjustment as an adjustment or an enhancement to. So what may happen is you may end up putting in three different texture layers, somewhat common to do to create certain tonalities or certain texture looks. But you want to be able to take the same basic adjustment that you're making to the, each of those textures and just copy and paste it, and that's what you can do. Okay, uh, let me look here. So blend modes are there. We kind of covered that, that you have blend modes here down at the bottom, which have a, a distinct uh, impact on things, especially when you go to things like multiply. So if you do that, and I do like multiply, you might want to bring uh, your opacity down somewhat, but you're certainly going to be able to see the texture more clearly. And again, I can bring out the detail in that texture with the detail slider. Again, just a reminder, I'm on the texture panel right now. That's all that's being affected is the texture by these adjustments. And then I can go into this enhancement, and I can even brighten that texture a little bit more or darken that texture, shadows, open those shadows up if I want to, and on and on. Just a reminder, if I, I'm not going to go in the basic adjustment here, I'll roll that up so it doesn't confuse us, but remember a neat little trick, if you want to change the tonalities, so in other words, if you like the texture and what that's doing, if you roll down saturation to nothing, that's removing all the saturation just from the texture, and now I can bring color strength up and then change the color of that texture to be really whatever I want. So if you, do, if you like the texture you have, but you're not a big fan of the tonality, in other words, maybe it's an amber tonality and you'd rather it be a blue tonality, but you're in love with the texture, bring your saturation to zero, bring your color strength up, and then bring slider to wherever you want that color to be. Does that make sense? It's a nice little tip. I don't like all that detail here, so I can bring that back, and we can certainly bring the opacity down, and on and on and on. So hopefully you're, you're starting to see the added capabilities and what you can and can't do. Let, let's move on. Let me make sure we can move on here. Um, we covered enhance. We did undo, redo, copy, and paste. Blend modes, let's, so that you're not like yawning out there and bored to tears over that image. And by the way, I just got back from Cape Cod uh, co-leading to one, uh, Cape Cod's like home to me, and my friend Betty Wiley, who is an extraordinary photographer um, and extraordinary teacher, she's tremendous, and she lives on Cape Cod, which is very envious because if there's one place I think I'd want to live, it might be Cape Cod. I went there as a kid. Uh, we'll be doing a workshop again next year, by the way, but... Um, She's just wonderful, and she's a texture queen, a processing queen. She's just tremendous. But so these images are all coming from uh, from Cape Cod, where I just was, which is kind of fun. So here we are. 
let's look at another image and see if we can't uh, just go through more quickly now how we might want to affect this image with some of the new tools. So let's go down here again. And then we'll go to the next one and we'll, we'll talk about some masking changes as, uh, on that one. <clears throat> okay, so you might, a typical workflow might be to come in here and, and I tend to start from scratch. In all honesty, most programs I don't use presets a lot, except for this one. This is one where I absolutely go and look at what presets are doing and say, whoa, that's really cool. And then I do what I just told you. I turn them all off, boom, 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 boom. And I start to see what they're doing. And I say, ooh, that basic adjustment is a little more than I want. So I'll leave that there, put the texture in there, color overlay, great. And you know what? Let me go in and add another basic adjustment because I want to brighten that up a little bit and bring out some of the shadow. No, I think I'll darken those shadows up, take the highlights up and make it a little, you know what I mean? So it goes on and on to how you can take the preset. So that's how you use a preset real quickly. If I go to the top right, I hit new. This is where I tend to live. I want to create something that I've thought about, I've dreamed about. So Here's what we can do. We can come in here and we can do a basic adjustment. And the basic adjustment, I can pull out all the color if I want to. And then I can add my own texture. And let's say I want to um, bring in one of the textures I like. So I'm going to go to, let's say, something like uh, flypaper paint. Really. I love flypaper stuff in general. But I can start clicking through their textures and see if I find something in here that I particularly care for. Or maybe you make it blue. Oh, I like this a little better. So let's go back to here and go to the blend modes. Come up here to something like multiply for a blend mode. Uh, bring the strength up a little bit. Brighten this up a little bit. You can start to see what's happening right here. I'm bringing the contrast down just a little bit. Eh, I don't like that one. I'll come up here. Let's try this color or let's try this texture. Yeah, that gives me a little better old world feel. So I'm doing this quickly on purpose, trying to give you an idea of how much fun and how easy it is to start rolling through everything you want to do. Let's take a little detour here because the question that always comes up at the end, and let's cover it now, is, yeah, but I have a whole bunch of textures that I like, or I bought these flypaper textures, how do I get those in there? Well, as long as you have a texture layer open, so again, this is what I consider a texture layer, it has the word texture, and I roll that triangle open, each, well, this one and multiple exposures, you'll be able to do the same technique. I'm going to go to this little box of the down arrow, and that's going to give me a dialog box where it shows all of the textures that I have. Any of these with a trash can, I have added to this product. So Kathleen Clemens has some ridiculously good uh, textures. I highly recommend Kathleen's. Um, there's fly papers. You'll see a whole bunch because I really like them. If you went out and bought uh, Meredith's, uh, Hazel's, Meredith's uh, textures, you would add those here. Uh, but let's say I have my own. Well, let's add a category, and let's call it John's Textures. Okay, and I create that, and I say, okay, there it is. I've created my own folder called John's Textures. If I highlight that in blue, and I now go over here to the right, and I hit Import, now I go to wherever I might have a texture, and I've just put one into a brand new folder. I literally got home last night from the Cape, so I don't haven't done much. I just created this one thing that I shot from Wide Open Boca, and I'm going to go ahead and add that. It's going to take a minute to copy that texture. If you're going to bring in like 30 or 40 from something like flypaper that you bought, you go get a cup of coffee and come back because it's going to take a while. In this case, one image is done. There it is. It's in there. So let's go ahead and close this. So just a review. If you want to add textures, the down arrow with the box, I would encourage you to make a folder so that you can find them easily, and I'll show you that in just a second. Then you hit a category, make the new category, and title that folder, highlight it, hit import, go get them. And now it should show up right here. So I should be able to go hit John's textures. And there it is. That's the out of focus spectral highlights I was photographing on the water where we were at one location. 
And now I can use that texture if I want to. I can make it bigger or smaller and place those wherever I want to. I can rotate these to, to be where I want them. I can flip them to be that direction, this direction, and on and on and on. So that's how you add textures. Um, let's go back here, uh, and I'm going to throw this away for a second and just show you what else I might do. Let's go back here, actually, on the basic adjustment. Let's bring the color back in here because the color is kind of nice on this. All right. Let's go here and add an adjustment, something like diffusion. And I'm a diffusion fan. Hopefully you can see what that's doing. It just, it's, let me see if I can, there you go. So before, after. Really soft, diffuse glow almost going on here. And now let's go here and go ahead and add a texture called, like, a, I think that's going to be, I wanted to do, I'm oh, sorry, it keeps floating there. So ethereal, let's go to flypaper, ethereal painterly. Let's go to like something in the blue category. Yes, yeah, like blue here. And let's go down and change my blend mode to multiply. Let's bring the opacity up a little bit. Uh, now we can change the brightness, add a little bit of contrast. Not bad, right? Yeah, but let's let's click on this enhance by way of review. So we don't have quite the control we want. Fine, just hit the enhance and say, you know what? Just on that texture alone, I would like to do uh, another basic adjustment and give myself a little bit more uh, control over the shadows that are going on. If there were some shadows in that in that particular texture, oh, I like that. So the the brightness, I can go a lot further with the brightness than I could just on that layer. So hopefully you're starting to get a snapshot here of the power that exists in adding this enhanced capability. All right, so not bad, right? So we've gone in, we put in. What have we done here? We wrote, let's roll this up. We quickly went in and did a basic adjustment. Uh, can you know, make this darker? We can make. And by the way, you can go back, right? So, that, which is exactly what I'm doing now. I can open up the shadows on that boat, so we can see that a little better. Bring the highlights down or up, whatever we want to do. Then I said, let's put in a diffusion texture because I love the softness that that generates. Uh, maybe that's too much. Leave it right around there. And then went in and put in the texture. And again, I can float all over the place with those textures, change the detail, the contrast, the brightness. And I didn't like quite how bright I could get. And I didn't like what that was doing on there. So by going to the enhancement, it allowed me to further adjust that brightness in a way that was much more pleasing to my eye. So let's move on here and believe it or not we'll probably be done here sooner than later because these things go by so quickly uh, let's go back whoops cancel out of there let's go back up here and let's go I believe this is Rock Harbor right yeah Rock Harbor um, cool place where they these trees are planted I believe every year is what Betty told me and they're, they're channel markers, so the boats know where to go, especially as the tide is getting low and they just follow these trees in. Of course, they die, uh, and then they just replant them every year, and it's just an iconic place to go photograph, really fun. Okay, so let's go back. Whoops, filter, topaz, come on, texture effects. And let's show you what else you can do. Let's go here, and let's go to texture, and let's go to, where is it? I want to see my skies. Here we go. Dramatic sky. Look at this. How cool is this? I can put in skies. So I'm just, what I did here is the same thing we did in textures. They've added some skies for you, but if you go out and shoot your own skies, you will go and do the same thing. You'll hit this down arrow box. You'll create a, a, a folder called skies or whatever you want to call it, or John skies. You know, add a category, name it that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then you'll be able to do that. Okay, so here we go. I've got a sky in there because there wasn't much of a sky, and I can change the opacity of that sky. And if I didn't want that sky to be in the water, I could do what? I can turn on my masking capability. I can hit my brush, 
and I can start to change the radius of the brush, I can change the strength of the brush, I can change the hardness of the brush, I'm going to make it a little harder. So the, and the hardness has to do, by the way, if you're, if you're wondering what I mean by that, notice there's two circles. The inner whiter circle, anything from that circle inside is going to receive the masking. Anything from that inner whiter circle to the less or the fainter outside circle is basically a feathered mask at that point. Uh, and you can tell that by the way it, it paints in the mask. And so really you never want this to go, this inside circle to go above the area that I'm going to paint on here. But the strength said, it, think of the strength almost like an opacity cider. So if I bring this way down and I start painting and that red shows you where I'm painting, it's removing, what I've just done is removed some of the, why it should be showing that in the mask there. It's, hmm, let me reset this mask guys. There we go. Let me start over again now. I should be able to now paint and the red allows me, which is new by the way, the red allows me to see where I'm painting. And if you look in the mask, because I'm only painting with a 12% brush, it's got a very light gray. And just to review, the way a mask works is white reveals, black conceals. So I'm painting with the color black, which I select here in the tool palette. And it's cumulative. So if I go and paint again, I can make that even fainter in the water, which is typically what you want to do actually. And I can make it fainter or, or a little bit fainter again or, or stronger, right? And that's what this strength slider is doing. So if I put this all the way up, it's going to paint with solid black. See, it's solid black and it looks kind of wonky. It's a really heavy handed effect. So look what we can do, redo undo rather, undo and keep going undo and you see exactly what I'm doing, you can see. Isn't that huge? That's really huge. It, it, it's a, a, what makes sense there is you can actually go back and see what's happening with this effect. It looks so much better when we lighten that sky effect in the water, doesn't it? It really does. So, uh, and, and Honestly, if you really want to do this properly, you'd be in Photoshop and you'd want to flip the sky so that it would look mirrored in the water. Uh, but I'm, I'm hoping, again, I, I didn't start up like I normally do. I'm not giving you perfect images in this session. I'm trying to get you motivated and inspired how to use these tools to then do what you want. So if I wanted to completely paint this out, I would come in with a a higher strength brush and I'd start painting this out to get rid of that texture in the water. I'd do a better job of painting because that just bled up into the um, into the sky. But now I have all those tools we just talked about so I can mask that way uh, and I can add some detail to the sky. I can add some contrast to the sky which starts to look terrible, right? Because it's not it's not blending properly, but when I bring the brightness up, that helps a little bit, right? And you can tweak. Again, we don't have the time to make this into a perfect image here in this session. So let's go back and let's rehit this mask and see if we can't show you what else is going on. So you say, what do the others do? Well, the spot should be pretty clear. You can make the spot mask as big or small as you want. And that's like, think about it like a radial uh, mask in Lightroom or something. You see, no matter where I put this, it is creating a beautiful feathered edge mask. You can make it color aware based on colors that it's choosing and surrounding it. And you can make the transition a softer edge or a harder edge. See, way over here, it's just a hard edge circle. The more we pull this over, the more it feathers it out. Color is going to do just what you think. It's going by using the color, it's going to, and again, look at the mask. Don't necessarily, well, you got to bounce back and forth between the mask and the image to see what's going. Keep in mind as you're looking at the mask that black conceals, white reveals. So as I pull this over, white is revealing the texture. The black area here, which is this water, it was just removed based on color. Okay, so here's just the opposite. The black is now concealing that sky adjustment and only leaving it where the white is in the middle here. You can see a piece of a cloud here. So while this might not be the best image to, to demonstrate the color one, it'll give you an idea what's happening. What's kind of cool here is it's allowing me to, well, actually, let's go to the luminosity one. So what's luminosity doing? It's doing the same thing as color, but it's doing it based on luminosity values rather than um, color values. 
which is really a big deal because watch, let's, let me show you what I just did right here. Notice now the trees are black, everything else is white. So but by using a luminosity mask here, it allows me to make sure that this adjustment of the sky is not taking place on the trees. That's pretty cool. Otherwise, you'd have to get a brush and get a really tiny brush and start painting. Imagine if it was a face or something else. You, you will have the opportunity now to have four different masks, uh, mask styles, I guess, or capabilities to pick from and try. You know, brush gets used a lot, but this luminosity one I think you're going to find exceedingly useful to slide and say, hey, yeah, I want to remove that from that area. And it works really well to remove the texture from, from these areas on this image. Uh, and the range is how much color range. Notice I can bring, again, watch the mask. When I move this range, I've added more tonalities in there that are being affected and masked. If I pull it this way, it's just the trees. So it all depends on what you're trying to accomplish uh, with your image here. Okay, so hopefully that does a good job of covering the details of masking uh, uh, here, or, or the addition of the, the color luminosity instead of just the brush. It was pretty basic masking before. By the way, the masks are now they now remain behind. Right before, uh, when you went to a new adjustment layer, it, the masks disappeared. So the masks stay with everything now, even when you move these. So if you want before, actually that's what happened, right? So if you had a stack here of other things and you added a mask and then you wanted to drag it around, let's do this so we can make this make more sense. So if we had something like this, and we had a mask on here, and then we wanted to drag this to be in a different place in the stack, the mask wouldn't follow with it. Now it does. It stays and follows with it in the layer stack for you now. So lots that we've talked about. This new square here allows us to copy something and go to another layer and paste it, and it'll have an effect of taking that adjustment you made and putting it there. You can also paste it to as an effect rather than, or as an enhancement rather, to one of the adjustment layers, and that's going to have a different. Uh, we talked about the undo and redo, which is huge because here it is right here. We just go back to where we started and get the sky. To me, you know, Heath is saying, "What's your favorite?" And that that might be one of my favorite because when you get in, you know, new box of crayon play mode you can get carried away and go, gosh, I wish I could go back four steps, and now we can. Uh, okay, let me just look here. Um, you know, just for fun, let's do this. So here we are back at this image. Oh, shoot, how do I get? Let's do this again. So just by way of review, textures, and we can go by category, and we can find dramatic skies. Let's do this one just for fun, and we can affect that sky with the blend modes, however we want to. And I think in this case, uh, the uh, well, let's just take a look here. Soft light. Nope. I think normal is probably the right way to go uh, for a sky. Make it darker or lighter. We get kind of crazy there. We want to turn on the mask. We hit yes. We go to luminosity and that makes sure that those trees are not receiving that. I kind of like that. And it's looking like a mirrored sky, sort of. It's not too bad. And then let's roll that up. I can add another texture layer just to have fun. Uh, let's, whoops, why does that roll up on me all the time? Let's go to something like flypaper uh, painterly, and I can find a texture and add something to the sky that's got cracks in it, uh, break the bright or small, and on and on and on. I think you're, you're starting to get the idea of the capabilities that you can do. And now let's add another adjustment layer, like a basic adjustment. Let's bring this down. Let's add shadow. Let's go to the clarity here and bring up really bring out the whole all overall texture. It's, it's too bright for me. I think I'd like the whole thing a little darker on, on and on and on. So we're going to be running out of time here very quickly. I think, let me look at the clock, 542. Man, it goes by too fast. Let me just check my list. Uh, so we talked about masking in that last image. We talked about 
uh, you can expand the texture, the blend modes and how important they are, and they're on every uh, layer that you want to create now. We can copy and paste, um, and we can copy and paste it into an enhancement, or we can just copy and paste it into the layer stack. Um, we showed you all the added capabilities, specifically in the texture uh, layer, where you have much more control over that texture. Heath, are you there? Did I did I miss anything that you wanted me to cover, or should we go to some questions and and see what people what they're interested to know a little bit more about? Uh, well, um, I uh, <laughs> you covered a lot. Um, <laughs> I know I'm, I'm out of breath. How about you? I, I bet they're out of breath listening. That's about all the. Uh... The questions that I can see here that haven't well, been answered. Well, good. And uh, we're about at that time, so I think I'm going to take the screen back. Uh, if you'd like to follow John, you can follow him at barclayphoto.com, uh, or you can follow him on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash John Barclay Photo, Instagram at John Barclay Photo, or Twitter at JH Barclay. And like he said, if you'd like to sign up for any of the workshops he has coming up, I think you said you have a bunch of openings in the spring. Everything else is pretty yep. cool. So they tend to go Perfect. fast, so take a look if there's something you're interested in. Um, he does an amazing job. If you have any additional you. questions, you can always contact us at webinars at topazlabs.com. And if you'd like to sign up for additional webinars, I have the rest of the ones coming up this month scheduled already. Uh, that will, You can do that at topazlabs.com forward slash webinars. Um, John, one of these days I want to get you to play that ukulele on the way. Yeah. <laughs> you guys need to know that I'm usually strumming away on my ukulele before we get started, and uh, he's threatening to record it. I'm glad he hasn't yet. <laughs> uh, you do a great I'm job. Good. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> little exit music. Wonderful. Uh, <laughs> thanks, everyone, for coming, John. Thanks, Thank everybody. So thanks for coming. Time. See you next time. Yep. See you next time. <laughs>